Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. But you may want to get back outside really soon if you've got cornfields because there are a number of above ground insects that could be attacking your crop. We're going to talk about how to stop them today. We're also going to talk a little about soybeans. Flowering is coming up and there are some things you need to get done prior to flowering. We'll discuss that today. We've also got a tough to control weed of the week. and. With this particular weed, it's going to be a fun one the rest of the summer. We'll show you how to stop it on your farm. But first, here comes our farm basics. Do you want perfectly conditioned grain, but are worried about the cost to upgrade your bins? With the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG, the ideal solution costs less than you think. Preventing your stored grain from spoilage and over drying can save your farm thousands of dollars in grain loss each year. And you can outfit your existing bin system for as little as a few hundred dollars, not thousands like you might expect. To learn more about how to get the low cost grain temp guard system on your bins at farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about water. When you think about water, our crops certainly need water, but too much water is bad. So let's first start by quantifying water. A lot of times you'll hear, we got an inch of rain overnight. Well, how much actually is an inch of rain when you spread it out over a whole acre? All right, so an acre inch of rain is 27,154 gallons. So in other words, if you had one acre worth of ground, which is and you about get an, like a football field, and you get an inch of rain on it, that means on that acre you got 27,154 gallons. That is a lot of water. All right, so if your crop needs all that water, no problem. It soaks into the soil, the crop takes it up, everybody's happy. But let's say that your soil was already full of water, now you got 27,000 gallons on each acre to get rid of. And many farm fields may be 10 acres, 20 acres, even 200 acres big. Well, you take 200 times 27,000, that's a lot of gallons of water. Yep, it is. So if you go back to maybe the first day that you went to college and you had a soils class, what they're usually going to tell you is your soil should be comprised of, or your land should be comprised of roughly 50% soil, 25% water, 25% air. Well, what happens is if you get too much water in that soil, in other words, basically the water table rises, now instead of having 25% air in there, you might have 0% air and 50% water. That's not a good ratio. The other thing that we often talk about in agriculture is field capacity for water. That is the roughly 25% water in that soil. That does not mean the water table is high. That's just the water that your soil can naturally hold. So you may be wondering how much water can the crop actually use? When we look at a crop like corn, it's estimated that a corn crop needs 2,500 gallons of water per bushel. So for each one inch of rain, that's about 11 bushels of corn that it could produce. Now on our farm, we generally get somewhere around 20 inches of moisture throughout the whole season, counting the snowfall and everything. Well, 20 inches of moisture times 11 bushels, that's 220 bushel corn. And I can tell you right now, we can produce more than 220 bushel corn on 20 inches of moisture. So I know that number's off a little bit, but at least <laughs> it gives you an idea that it does take quite a few gallons of water to produce almost any crop. All right, let's talk about too much water. When farmers are installing drain tile, they will use what's called a drainage coefficient. What that means is how many inches can you get rid of over a 24 hour period? Most drainage systems in our region of the country are set up on about a half inch drainage coefficient. So in other words, over the course of 24 hours, you can only get rid of a half an inch per acre out of that field. And that's a big deal because when you get a large rain, let's say you get a two inch rain or a four inch rain, if you don't have drainage tile and your field is already at field capacity for water holding, you're gonna get two inches or four inches running off probably in just a matter of an hour or two if that rain came fast. With the drainage tile, you're gonna have that water releasing over a long period of time, which is great and helps reduce flooding. Well, once again, there are a lot of things when it comes to water and farming, so we wanted to run through a few of those today. Another thing that's really important to farming is having great weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week?
tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at SoilWarrior.com slash AgPhD. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual react control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH certified technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. It's finally getting to the time of year where we're going to see soybean flowering coming up later this month through most of the United States. But the problem is soybeans get more sensitive at that point, so there are a few things we want you to do before you have soybean flowering on your farm. Well, soybeans, Brian, are important. Once they get into that flowering stage, you have to be careful with them, but you do with every crop. So just think about it. No matter if you're raising soybeans or something else, once you get to those reproductive stages, you can really hurt that crop. You can really damage your yield potential by putting on harsh things after that. So if you know flowering is coming up soon and you've got something harsh that you need to do, like for example, take out pigweed in soybeans, get that done now. Get your Flexstar out there, or your Cobra, or your Reflex, whatever product you're using. If it's going to create some stress for that crop, you'd much rather do it now rather than once that crop starts flowering. Yeah, and quite frankly, even products that are easy, or at least we feel like are easier on the crop, so like Roundup on Roundup Ready soybeans, Dicamba on Extend soybeans, Enlist One on Enlist soybeans, all those things, we'd like to get as much of that done before flowering as possible. Because even if you say, well, it doesn't hurt the crop much, yeah, it does a lot of times. What we see, even like with Roundup, for example, is a little yellow flash. What's that telling you? That's telling you that something is going on in that plant. Maybe there's some metabolism, just moving the herbicide around, something going on. So we would suggest maybe getting some more plant growth hormones out if you do have to spray after flowering, but try to get the spraying done before flowering, get your weeds taken care of then. The other thing you need to do is get prepared for the reproductive stages. Now in soybeans, there's been so much data over a number of years showing a positive benefit of using foliar fungicides to protect those beans, especially when you get out to full bloom to first pod. Well, guess what? That's not very far away. That's just a few days away. So we've gotta be ready for that by having those fungicides on hand and ready to go. The other thing would be if you're in a sclerotinia white mold area. Now, if you're in an area that has that kind of disease, you need to start spraying at R1. So if you're going to do that, you better get those products on hand right now so you can start spraying them almost immediately. All right, here's where I'm gonna disagree with Darren. You gotta spray before R1 when you're using Cobra as a fungicide. So we can talk about sclerotinia and all these fungicides that, yep, they say spray at R1, then at R3, then at R5. That's all great. But how about beforehand? What can we do ahead of time to be stopping that sclerotinia? When you look at Cobra sprayed right before flowering, like maybe the day or two or three before flowering, you're gonna have just as good a performance with that for five bucks an acre versus a lot of these fungicides that cost 
10, 20, 30 dollars an acre. So get that done before flowering. The other thing I get concerned about at this time of year is bugs. Once we get to those reproductive stages, we definitely see more insects and soybeans year in and year out. So the scouting has to start right now because some of those bugs are already out in your field. You don't want them to explode and get to a large population right when your soybeans are at a critical stage. The other thing I would suggest you do is start your plant tissue analysis before flowering. If you have any other fertility products you want to put out there, that would be a great time to get it done because once flowering hits, the plant goes from needing a few nutrients to needing a ton in a hurry. And if it's short any day, your yield goes down. And one of those nutrients the plant needs, Brian, is nitrogen. And so often we get a little bit lazy out in our soybean crop thinking, ah, soybeans can produce the nitrogen that they need. In fact, they can only produce about 70% of the nitrogen they need. You may need more. One good thing you could do is do some digging right now. Take a look at the nodulation that you have on your root system. If it's not very impressive, you're probably more likely going to need some nitrogen out there. Or if you say, wow, my soybeans have never looked better. I've got 80, 90, 100 plus bushel potential out there get the nitrogen out there so it can get into your crop as it needs it. Okay, Darren said nitrogen, so right away you might think, oh, I should try nitrogen. I don't want you to try nitrogen unless you've got one of the following scenarios. Number one, you're going for really high yield potential. Darren mentioned 80, I think 80 is kind of low. But still, above that 90, 100, 100 plus, yes, you probably need nitrogen. Number two, do you have low organic matter soils? If you do, probably a good idea to throw more nitrogen out there. And number three is if last year you had some flooding or you haven't raised soybeans in quite a few years, for whatever reason, you are going to be low on nitrogen production. That's when obviously you need to throw more nitrogen out there and try to get that done right before flowering. So once flowering hits, you got plenty of ample nitrogen all through that process. I love how Brian sets the bar high. Hey, double the national yield average for soybeans. That's a low level well, I'm just of saying, yield. On, uh, from what we've seen around the country and really around the world, adding more nitrogen when you're at only 60 bushel beans, it doesn't pay that often. So I'm trying to help you understand when it's going to pay better. You gotta make money on the farm, can't just have more yield. Well, if you wanna make more money raising soybeans, this is the stage where things turn. You've got to be ready. Soybean flowering is coming, and it's coming very soon. So we need to get those harsh herbicides put out up front. We need to make sure all the nutrients are in place. We're scouting for insects. We've got our plant tissue testing program going because once soybeans start flowering, yield potential can be lost if we don't have these things ready on our farms. Well, another time when we see yield potential lost is when you don't control our Weed of the Week. But we'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whenever you want, in your life and on your farm, Case IH AFS Connect gives you more control. Monitor your operation, manage your fleet and your farm data your way. Case IH, rethink productivity. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. 
and use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBearPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. All throughout the growing season, we want you to be scouting your corn fields for insects. So today we're gonna to talk just a little bit about some of those bugs that you may see out there. The bugs we're gonna run through, and roughly from early in the season to late in the season, include cutworms, armyworms, stock borers, grasshoppers, then we get to European corn borer, western bean cutworm, corn rootworm beetles, corn leaf aphids, and earworms. I remember back in 1997, the first year that we were doing filming out in the field for Ag PhD, and we got a call from a farmer who said, I've got some cutworms out here, would you mind coming out to take a look? And I said, sure. We got out there, it was overcast, it was cool, and it was damp. And all the cutworms were out on top of the ground during the day. So often we see with hot, bright sunny days, those cutworms are coming out at night and you don't see them during the day. And I'll talk to farmers that say, you know, I, I know something's cutting my plants off, but I can't find any bugs and they have to do some digging before they find the cutworms. Cutworms can come really early in the season, completely chop off your plant. Sometimes it'll be above the growing point and that corn will regrow, other times it may not be. But you definitely don't want to have this happen on your farm because you're going to lose some yield. There's no question about it. When you lose two leaves on your corn plant, now that's going to reduce how much sunlight that plant's going to capture. So spraying cutworms with a pyrethroid is really important. Don't listen to people that say, well, they're going to be gone. They're almost at, at full grown and they'll be gone. No, spray them, kill them, wipe them out. One of the big problems I think we have as farmers, I know I do myself, is we kind of get lazy because we say, well, I've got a BT trait that controls that bug and I've got seed treatment out there. Oh, and by the way, I also use some Capture LFR or Aztec or Force. So I've got plenty of insecticide out there, I'm good. I don't care how good you think you are, there could be bugs that move in. Darren mentioned cutworms, probably not that bug if you've used three different insecticide things, you know, the trait and, and the seed treatment and something actually in furrow. But how about armyworms? Armyworms are called that because they will move in like an army and just all of a sudden in one day they could wipe out acres of your field. So that's one of the reasons why we want you out there scouting all the time. And it's one thing to scout in your field, but you also need to scout around the edges because sometimes you'll see bugs move in from the grassy areas around the outside of a field. Like grasshoppers are a great example of that. And another one is common stock borer. We see stock borers generally in the first few rows on the outside edge of the field. They can make a mess and totally destroy your corn plants, so keep your eye out for them. Then we get to the European corn borer. One of the things that drives me crazy is as a farmer, I have to have 5% refuge. So 5% of my plants are gonna get eaten up by corn borers. I can't stand that, drives me crazy. I hate to, to go spend the money on an insecticide for the whole field when literally only 5% of my plants need it. So it's hard to justify that, but I don't like the logic of, oh, I'm just gonna let the bugs feed on 5% of my plants. If you do not have a traded crop, let's say you have conventional corn, you need to be scouting for corn Corn borers, I would suggest starting at about knee high corn and then you got to scout all the way up at least every week. And you're looking for egg masses on the plant and this is one of those things when you're out scouting your fields look really closely on the upper surface and the underside of the leaves because oftentimes you'll see egg masses for different things. Now it may be something like corn borer, it also may be a beneficial like ladybugs. So you're going to have to learn how to identify between the, the different egg masses that you might see there. Fortunately, uh, there are a lot of pictures available to help you with this, but do the scouting on the leaves, on the plants, and along the edges in the ditches too. Yeah, and don't forget about western bean cutworm. That would be another one you might find some egg masses for. Now, you're not going to look for egg masses with this, but 
corn rootworm beetles. So that's the adult stage of the corn rootworm that would feed on roots. You usually see those around tassel time. And if you have quite a few of those, you actually could justify spraying foliar. The good thing too, when you spray foliar, yes, uh, you'll prevent the silk feeding. And so you should hopefully have better pollination. But the other side of it is if you spray early enough before they mate and lay eggs, you'll have fewer corn rootworms next year. Well, that's a great point. If you are going out with a fungicide application, Make sure you're scouting for these bugs ahead of time because you could get a free ride for your insecticide when you're going out there with the fungicide. Another thing that you may scout right around this time is corn leaf aphids. We see corn leaf aphids preferring certain hybrids over others. Like for example, you walk through a corn hybrid trial, you may see aphids only on certain numbers out there, but man, they can get thick and it can be a mess out there. So do keep your eye out for those corn leaf aphids as well. The last one I'll throw out is earworms. Hopefully you don't have this problem because it's really hard when you've got something that's in the stalk or that's actually in feeding on the ear inside that husk. How are you going to get insecticide in there? It's impossible. So literally you'd have to spray when the adult is out laying eggs. It's just a real challenge. The good news again, if you have a trait that will kill some of these bugs that you could have later on in the season, hopefully that's going to take care of it. But we absolutely do encourage you to scout all the time, all throughout the season. Insecticides are quite inexpensive. While you're out there doing all that scouting, keep an eye out for our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it. It's coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> is wild cucumber. I remember getting a call on this weed probably 10 or 15 years ago and there was a farmer who was really busy. He had a dairy operation. He had a lot of acres to get over and it was about the middle of the summer and he happened to go out in his tree grove and noticed it was overrun with wild cucumber. And he said, what is this thing that's completely covering a good area of my tree grove? It was wild cucumber. And at that point in the middle of the summer when all the trees have all their leaves, it's pretty tough and you got big crop right around it as well. It's tough to find something to spray over the top of a tree grove like that. Well, let's first of all talk about how this weed can actually kill some trees. It's certainly going to damage the trees because it's going to cover them. It's going to prevent a lot of the photosynthesis that can happen. That's obviously not a good thing. And simply the weight too. There's a lot of weight there as wild cucumber fills out. So you want to try and get it under control. So what I would say is, first of all, find it early. If if you can find that plant when it's early and kill it before it starts vining up the trees, you're in good shape. The other thing is hand pulling it. If you've got, say, an evergreen tree and you've got some wild cucumber growing up around it, just pull the weed. It's an annual weed. You can get down to the root, pull it out, and then rip it out of the tree. You can do that without damaging the tree and you can get rid of that weed. Yeah, now there, now there are a lot of herbicides that will work fine to kill it. Tordon, 2,4-D, dicamba, but are you going to use any of those around your trees? No way. So that's where I just kind of come back to. Most of the time, if it's in the shelter belt, you got to go hand pull. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design, highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. For more information about this beast, available only in our new Gray Poly, call 855-CAPELLO or visit capellousa.com to find a dealer near you. Capello, wherever you are, we are. 
It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low-cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump. Providing the ultimate protection, this wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now, all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. Agro-Liquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the soil warrior. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Wherever you are, Whatever you're doing, whenever you want, in your life and on your farm, Case IH AFS Connect gives you more control. Monitor your operation, manage your fleet and your farm data your way. Case IH, rethink productivity. Downtime is a killer to productivity during spray season. I'll discuss an equipment upgrade that you'll want to consider in today's Iron Talk. The windows for getting jobs done on the farm seem to narrow each season. Take spraying, for example. There are only so many days where the wind is light and it's not raining and the temperature is good too. Now, if you have a problem with your sprayer, it not only costs you time, but it can absolutely cost you yield. A recent study by Southern Illinois University found that up to 4.8 bushels of corn yield per acre can be lost for every one inch of weed growth. With pigweeds growing as much as two to three inches in a single summer day, you can quickly see how much avoiding a breakdown is worth. My question today is how often are you servicing your spray pump? I can speak for our farm that the pump is often taken for granted until there's a problem. We decided to invest in a new force field pump from Pentair Hypro. The key for us was that the force field centrifugal pump utilizes a barrier fluid to keep the mechanical seal lubricated and cool to prevent failure. The seal chamber is self-regulating and actively maintains the proper pressure without the need for inspection, maintenance, or input from the operator. This means more time being productive in the field and a better chance of killing those weeds before they kill your yield potential. It also takes away stress as the pump can run dry, allowing you to apply the full tank without mechanical seal failure so you get a full clean out at the end of the day. If you haven't looked into replacing your pump recently, I'd suggest taking a look at the force field pump from Pentair Hypro to eliminate downtime, save money on repair and maintenance, and to be able to spray out a full clean out each time with your sprayer. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to encourage you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. To learn more, just go to agphdinsider.com. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.